All right, everyone, so today we're going to continue our work. You should have a copy of the project. Keep it the way that it is here. If you copied it from my folder, or from the network folder, you will have a folder called uh, September 9th. And then inside of that folder, you'll have another one called mobile website. Keep this structure because this will actually save us some effort later on. Remember when I had the, um, the wireframe drawn up on, this, uh, up on the board here, we had an, uh, we, we had an outside um, screen zero uh, that the user gets to which detects are they on mobile or desktop. And then if they're on mobile, they get directed to the mobile version of the project. So that's, that's done for us there. So that means we'll need a screen zero later on. But inside the mobile uh, site, that's what we've got so far, just three files, these Kodika extra files, which eventually will have our custom CSS and custom JavaScript, and uh, our index file where all of our three screens currently exist. So let's, um, on index HTML, let's right click, edit with Notepad++, and we'll, we'll start to... We'll start to work. <coughs> and just to remind ourselves what we've got so far, um, load it up in Notepad and then load up the web browser. I'm going to go with Firefox and then change my screen tall and thin. Where I la last left off was uh, home art computers screens exist. Um, the code that we got came from that Kodika uh, prototype uh, screen, which we needed to take some effort to upgrade the code to version 1.4.3 uh, because it was giving us 1.3 something. So we actually also need to clean up a couple of little things uh, that were re leftover remnants from the old branch of the code. Specifically, we're going to we're going to browse through our code and find wherever we've got data theme, we need it to make sure it either says data theme A or B. Because in version 143 or 14x, only data themes of A and B exist. If you use data theme E, for example, or C, uh, those are archaic. They don't work anymore. So this is a good ex a good uh, example, a good time to use then the the find feature in Notepad. So I'm going to press Control F, or you can get it from the menu, Edit menu. Uh, I think it's under Edit, Search. You got a search menu. Find. We do have find and replace, which often helps us, and we'll talk about that as. Time goes on, but in this case, we might have a data theme equals C, and I think there's a data theme equals E in there, something. So find and replace won't quite help us, but here's what we'll do. Go up to search and find, or control F, and under find, let's type data dash theme. We're going to have it find for us instances where data theme exists, and if there's anything besides an A or a B, we will change it to an A or a B. What if it's just empty? Too if it's empty, it's fine, because then it's going to be inheriting the theme of the next level above it. So if the previous level had a B, this one will inherit it when it's blank. What I like about this find is we've got um, the simple find next, etc., but we can also do count. So sometimes you need to know how many instances of something are found in the document. If you click count, in my case, it pops up with 16 matches. So we'll, we'll have to check 16 places where it might be wrong. We've got also find in all opened documents. This is cool. If I've got two different HTML files open, and I want to find everywhere where it says data theme, I can select that, and it'll find it in all open documents. Find all in current document. OK, I know I've got 16 of them throughout the document, Find all in current document might help me better than find it next. I'm going to try that. Find all in current document. What pops up is a new screen that tells me every line where it's found at. Very useful. Again, another great reason why Notepad++ is better than plain old Notepad. So line 16 has a data theme of A, which is fine. Uh, thir 33 has empty, which I'll leave alone. If any are, are empty, just leave those alone. 
Data theme A, data theme A. There we go, data theme C, on line 164. What you can do is down on this little window when you find one of these data themes that is that is wrong, double click it, and then on the main window it'll jump you to the relevant portion of the code. Data theme C does not exist in um, jQuery Mobile 14 14x. Let's change that to um, let's just put it on A for the moment. And it seemed that was the only place in my document where there was any instance of data theme. So I can close. Notice there's a little close button down on that panel. Notepad++ can have many panels, actually. Um, I'll show you a couple in a moment. But when you're done with a panel, you could close it. Remember to save. And so what we wanted to do there was uh, remove the instances of the archaic code. And that was a good question. What if it's empty? It inherits the previous data theme. All right, so let me give you a little preview of something that's going to be useful uh, other times. If you copied my my version of the code. For fun, we had put down here copyright 2014 and then some, some other characters. That's not, that's not what is going to be there on the last, uh, on the final version of our project. That's just there temporarily. This is another spot where the find feature really excels, especially find and replace. So what I want to do is replace all instances in my project of this line of code here with the correct line of code. So uh, what we can do is um, find anywhere where you see the copyright. I'm currently around line 173. So I'm going to select that line 173. You can triple click it. One, two, three. It selects the whole line. Actually, that selected too much. Don't do that in this case. Uh, just select. Sometimes triple click will, will do what you want. It selects the whole line. It actually technically selected more than I wanted. Just select the text, the whole copyright, etc., etc. Select that, and then press Control F, or search, find. And because I selected something before I went into find, it said, oh, you must be looking for that. That's good. I don't want to find it. What I want to do is replace. We've got a tab, a bunch of tabs up here. One of them is replace switch to replace and it says, okay, you're looking for this, what do you want to replace it with? I want to replace it with the part that does not have the yen symbol and the e acute. So I just copied the part that I do want and pasted it here. And this is very powerful because I could also Notice there's an option in selection. If I've got a paragraph selected, I can target only that paragraph to do a find and replace. By default, it would do the whole document. So if I've got something selected first, I could do that with in selection. And there's a bunch of other things. Match case might come up a few times later. Let's say we're, we have instances of the word cat throughout our document, but in a few places we need cat to be in uppercase letters because it's code, and in other places cat is lowercase because it's the cat, the, the mammal. So we can say only replace things that are all uppercase, cat. And other options, even if you know uh, regular expressions, if you can do regex, you've got that power as well. But in our case, pretty simply, we're just going to replace the footer with that, from that to this, so then select replace all. In our case, it's only three, I believe, three instances. Replace all. And it says down here, three instances were replaced. So it scanned all of our code, found 
the code and then fixed it. So you can keep that replace window open. Notice it becomes transparent if you click on the code itself. But if you don't need it anymore, I'm going to close it. Save it and run it, and just confirm that now the footer says simply copyright 2014 instead of the Olay part. Okay, so let's. Um, we've got two big things we need to deal with: the uh, the content in the project, and the uh, and the layout of the project. We'll work on the layout. Uh, for, for the first few sessions first, and then we'll start adding the content. Uh, so the content will be the pictures and the text and all of that. Before I get to that, I want to set up a little bit more of the layout. Uh, we've got the three main screens, good, but remember, referring back to the original example, we've still got several screens to create, so we're going to create some more data roll pages to remind ourselves. Okay, at home, art computers, art screen, pretty much done. Need to fill in that content eventually. Under the computer screen, I need to create more of these dividers. We need to do that. And notice when I click on one of these buttons, it scrolls over to another page of content. We need to do that. And then eventually we'll do the home screen where we've got this pop-up window and then the direction screen. So we still got some more layout stuff to do. Let's work on the uh, computer's screen. I want more of these dividers, and then uh, when you click on a button, I want it to go somewhere. So let's go find the spot where our dividers are at. And again, once we've, we've only got about 180 lines of code, so it's not too much to browse. But here's another example where find might be very useful to you. Think about find as a way to navigate your document, control F. I know basically that uh, on this screen I've got some text that is only unique to that screen. If I'm over on the home screen, it says welcome, art says become an artist, computer says learn about computers. So I could search for computers. Actually no, computers is found on every screen, isn't it? the nav bar. All right, so another thing we could do is we could search for the phrase about computers. That one is only found on one screen. And when you've got a thousand lines of code, this is when find becomes really helpful. But for practice, I'm going to say I don't know where I need to look, so I'm going to do control F. Look for about computers. All I want to do in this case is just find. I'm not replacing anything. Be careful. I'm just going to find. Oh, there it is. Let's go to line 159. And let's see how this divider is made. So at about line 159, we've got a, a, a 160 actually. We've got a, a section that has a data role of list view. But I, I mentioned it briefly last time. We'll look at it more now. This is one of the few examples where we're not going to see that there's a div with a data role. We see the div with a data role over and over. The, the data role might be a page, it might be a header, it might be a footer or content. In this case, it's a UL. Bullet points. So since it's a bullet point list, that's how it is unstyled. That's how it is without the data role of list view. But simply by having data role list view, it upgrades it to this. And again, that's jQuery mobile. If you don't have jQuery mobile connected, then the, then the, then the bullet points do not get upgraded. Let's 
got a data theme, data inset true. Hmm, this is another thing where maybe we don't know what it is. We could go look at the documentation, but why don't we try to change it? Try to change data inset true to false and see what happens. I can tell you what happens, but why don't you try? So change on line 160, data inset to false. <laughs> Once you do that, what would you say that what would you say that did? Here's before and after. There's with insert inset true, inset false. It just changes the design of it so that it's not indented into the screen. There's no buffer on the edges. It goes all the way across the screen. So that's a little aesthetic thing. If you decide you like this version or that version. They both will do the same thing, but it simply is changing the data inset. I like the inset uh, true. I like that it's kind of um, a separate entity, so I'll put it back to true. Inside of the bullet the bullet list, the UL, the unordered list, you've got list items. A list item is a bullet point. One bullet point, second bullet point. LI slash LI, list items, bullet points. And then this divider has a data role of list divider with a role of heading. So that's how we can create more dividers. And then each particular item within this division is simply a list item and it could have a data theme A or B to change to a different design. So I, this computer screen is going to list three sections basic, intermediate, and advanced computer classes and then list a couple of fictional computer classes within those dividers. So I want to add a, uh, I want to change that from it saying divider to basic computer classes line 162. Basic computer classes. Oh, we'll just say basic classes. And we'll make up a class in line 166. We'll call it COM101. Maybe put in a fictional name. Uh, intro to the PC. I want another class, so that means we need another list item. Uh, notice also you've got the text and then wrapped around it is a, an A tag, a link, which goes nowhere at the moment, but it will mm -hmm. eventually, it's something called data transition. So we need another list item. For practice, let's write it manually. So after the current list item, let's add a list item pair, li, li tag, list item. We're adding another bullet point. <clears throat> Between the tags, we'll write, we'll see the difference here, com102. We can write... Um, Intro to the Mac. Let's save and run that. It doesn't look exactly as the previous versions, but let's see what the difference is. So if I save and run it and go to the computer's screen, that's how that looks. Now it says basic classes. There's the COM101, there's the COM102. What's the difference? Uh, 
the first one, COM101, has an, is an active link. It has a little arrow at the edge, and if I put my mouse over it, it looks like I can click it. Whereas COM102 does not look like an active link. And that simply works by adding an A tag around it. Once I've added the A tag, it then automatically becomes a clickable link, and it gets that little arrow. So we'll leave it like this for the moment. We could add a link later. Notice I did not need to specify a data theme, because again, if I, if I have a data theme equals empty, or I have no data theme, it still inherits the previous theme uh, from the level above it. Let's say now we've got the basic classes section, a couple of basic classes. Let's make a new divider and say, now let's talk about some intermediate classes and add a class or two. To do the divider, we need to look at how the uh, previous divider was made. It's going to be another bullet point, but it will need the data role list divider. So again, let's write it manually for practice, and then next we can copy and paste. But uh, once we understand how it works, by writing it, you know, doing it the hard way, then we can copy and paste once we know what we're doing. So make another list item pair. We'll call that uh, intermediate classes. intermediate classes, and then we need to upgrade this plain old list item. So inside of the list item tag, click in there. We will add an attribute here, and this one is going to be a data role. List dash divider. After that, we have role heading, role of heading. The background behind all of these, or the background. Well, uh, one way is to do the data theme, A or B. Uh, but a little bit later, we'll talk about with CSS to give us our own color, because data themes A or B are just the basic black or white. But if I want yellow, we'll need to write some CSS, some styling. But we'll do that a little bit later when we get to the point of customizing the, the basic project. If we save and run this at this point, we should get a new divider there, and then we'll add a new item, COM201, with an active link to a page that doesn't exist yet. Question? You mean like alternating shades on different lines? No, well, I'm not sure if I know exactly on where you mean uh, a different color where exactly. <clears throat> well, uh, this was like a question earlier. Uh, we'll be able to use CSS to do that. So once we get to the point where we're tired of this boring design once we've fully set it up, then we'll get into CSS so that we can start customizing colors. But first we want to set up the basic structure and then we can style it. And we'll talk about every aspect of sty uh, the styling of every aspect of the, of the design, but a little bit later. 
So I want a class here. Uh, after intermediate classes, I need another list item. And we'll make up a class COM201, second level. And uh, we could say uh, intro to uh, Linux. I want this to actually be clickable, so I need to take a cue from what was there before of adding the A tag. So actually I want the A tag around that. So the A tag will make this an active link inside of a list item inside of an unordered list. href pound something. We haven't created the page yet. Uh, with our foresight of what we drew up here, we could have also put the names of the pages we will be creating. Um, so let's say we, we, we know that we're eventually going to create uh, three new pages, basic computers, uh, intermediate computers, and advanced computers. Um, so let's say this will be a link to INTCOM, Intermediate Computers. That page does not exist yet, so if you click it, nothing will happen. But my idea is that when I uh, click on that, It'll take me to a screen full of content for intermediate computers. So I might as well go back to where we've got COM101, fill that in too, back on line 165. I'll call that B-A-S-C-O-M, Basic Computers. Notice in, the, in what already existed, there was also a data transition. So uh, in, in a little bit, we will be playing with data transition, which are the built-in uh, animations that we have from going from screen to screen. I think there's only about six of them, but they're pretty cool. Um, there's uh, already the built-in one, which is fade. And then on this one, it's saying slide. And again, if we go back to, w, if we go back to jQueryMobile.com, it'll give us a list of them. We'll play with those transitions a little bit later, once we've actually got a target page to look at. Right now, this button won't take us anywhere. Uh, so I want to add one more element to this um, list view component. I want to add now the advanced section. And actually, I just want to put a uh, coming soon at the end. I don't have any advanced classes, let's say. So I want another divider. So another list item, this is advanced classes, data role, oh, we could have copied and pasted, but data role, list divider, role heading, another list item, We'll just say coming soon. And we won't have any link. So we'll give that a try for a moment. If you need any help at this point, raise your hand. We want to add one more item, but we won't link it to anything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Start a brand new list and then uh, make another one. Did everyone get a chance to uh, put their name on the sign in sheet? Mm -hmm. 
so you should save your work. Uh, check the, the web browser, and now you should see you've got a brand new section at the bottom without an active link, because it's coming soon. And then what we'll do is, well, we'll take a moment then to create these actual target pages. And these, again, will be very simple pages, but we'll need a new data roll of page with a heading and a content. We'll skip the footer. But we need some target pages. Uh, so I'm going to save. This is what it looks like so far. All right, so I want to make some pages that exist for these two buttons. I'm going to make these pages at the end of my, my document. So if you go down to, I have a blank space on line 194. That div closes <coughs> the page for the computer screen. See, it goes back to data roll page computer. So uh, I'm going to add a comment there, actually, because I'm going to lose track of this stuff. So I'm going to add a comment on line 193 on the same line here. Remember the comment tag, uh, which is angle bracket, exclamation point, dash, dash, space, dash, dash, angle bracket. That makes a comment. And I will label that as end of computer's screen. It's a good idea to label your sections. Now I know that what what can follow is my uh, my uh, my basic computer screen and then my intermediate computer screen. So I'll give myself a little bit of space there, a couple of enters. I like to put a little bit of a buffer between elements, personally. So I'll create a div. Data roll page needs an ID. Remember, we remember on the previous section we're saying we're going to link to something called BASCOM, Basic Computer Classes. I need a div for the uh, header. So we've done this before. I'll go through it a, a bit quickly and then, then let you catch up. Uh, we can write here basic computer classes. Right? The heading that appears at the header. Div of content. And then uh, in the basic section, it's listing the Mac and the PC classes. So we can write something like um, um, get up to speed in the basics. And we'll add some content a little later. But now you try this for a moment, then we'll go on create this new page with this unique ID and fill in a little bit. Copy and paste it to save yourself some effort. Copy this, paste it afterward, and then make uh, <coughs> INTCON so you can have these two end pages. Take a moment to do that, to do that and then we'll go on. Anybody need a little help at this point? <coughs> you 
So let's go to the one moment. All right, so I'm going to move on in about one minute, but you, um, I'll, I'll make the second page in a moment and then we'll go on. All right, so um, just to confirm here, uh, what happens is, if, I, if you got up to the point that I got, uh, I click, and then it goes to a whole new screen, and it also slides over. That's what the data transition does. We'll play with those in a moment. What we've got is uh, we get to this screen, and actually this is a dead end because then I don't have any more navigation. I'm not going to make a, a navigation box or a navigation bar like the other screens. I, I simply, though, want a way to go back. Yeah, I have a way to go back on the web browser, but I don't want to rely on that because eventually this will be this will be a, an app on a device, and I want to be able to navigate to the different screens in the app. 
So what I need is on this div of data role of page base com, I need to add a little another little uh, jQuery mobile thing that adds a back button. So on one line on line 196, which it in my case shows div data role header. This is the header area where it's the basic computers. We're going to add another attribute here. We've got div data role header. We're going to add another one. And this one is data data uh, add data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. What this does is it simply activates a back button on this screen and its sole purpose is to just take you back to the screen you came from and that's all we need in this case. We have this larger screen, we go to a subscreen and we just need to go back. We don't need the full featured nav bar. We just need to go back. We do have to type it in a very specific way. Data dash add dash back dash btn true. And make sure you're adding this to the data right next to the data role of header. So save it and run it, see it in action. When you go from the computer screen into the basic computer screen, you should then have a simple back button. So I go to enter to PC. Oh, I think actually it should go. They changed it on version 3 to 4. Actually, I think it goes up here. Let me check. <coughs> What's that? Two people talked at the same time, one at a time. That looks fine to me. Does yours look worse than that? Yeah. Our text is left Okay, I might need to look at yours a little bit later, but just to make sure that the code looks like this, data add back button true btn, not don't spell out the word button, it's just btn. So if it doesn't quite look like mine, uh, I had to close the page and relaunch the Firefox. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, it's still not working. So this is a built-in feature of jQuery Mobile where um, we add data add back button true and it just gives us a simple back button. <coughs> and yes, I have a back button in my web browser, but I'm not going to rely on that because eventually this will be a um, an app. So I need to do, uh, we'll, we'll do this and then we'll take a break. I need now a screen, some of you already did this, but I need a screen for my intermediate classes. My basic classes is a good skeleton because I've got the back button and the little content area and all of that. Don't need the footer. Uh, so if you've got your basic computer screen working, I'm going to copy and paste so I can make the intermediate screen. I might have already done it, but here's how I would do it. Uh, all of this from 195 to 203 is what makes the basic computer screen work. So I'm, I need to copy it all. And paste it. Paste it, paste it afterward, and then I need to make sure that I change the ID, that I do not have two IDs of the same thing. We dealt with that last time. And the name of that, of course, is the name that we put up on the on the uh, on the nav bar, which was intcom, I N T C O M, and I can say intermediate computer classes. Just make up some content here for the moment.
So the skeleton of a page is all that I really need. I'll fill in the pictures and we can add videos and other things later. Of course, style it. But I just want to make sure I've got a skeleton of a page. In this case, copy and paste worked really well. And if I save and run it, this is what I should get. Uh, intro, of course, looks like that. And then I click Intermediate, and I've got a new page. Notice it didn't slide over. If I click on Intro, it slides over. It looks nice. I press back, it slides back. Intermediate page, if I click it, it just kind of appears. If I press back, same thing, because I never set a transition to the button. And the default is a little fade. And that is governed by the button, not by the page. And by that I mean that when we, on our on our COM 101 button on line 166, we've got data transition slide, which we did not add to our new COM 201. So if we add data transition slide, just like that, then we can, can keep the consistency of the user experience. So we'll go back to line 176, data dash transition slide. There we go, slides over. I'm going to save it at this point. Uh, let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll continue to add our content. So. It's uh, 7.01, we'll be back at 7.11, and we'll go on.